In this video, we hope to help you understand your special senses with the antics of these special, really special students, Heidi, Shelby, and Rihanna. With a little help from myself, Robert Salucci, we'll attempt to bring this information to you in a way that not only will you understand, but also remember. What are your special senses, you ask? Well, our special senses include the eyes, which are for vision, the nose, which is for a sense of smell, your mouth, and your tongue, which are obviously for your sense of taste, your ears for hearing and balance, also known as the equilibrium. We, we will show you some of the things that can go wrong that might cause your special senses to not function properly. We begin with Heidi waking up in the morning after a restless night with complaints of her vision being blurred. <laughs> Heidi also noted a problem with her sense of taste and smell for approximately the past 24 hours. She wasn't initially worried about her taste and smell, figuring her, that her allergies were acting up, or maybe she was getting a cold. Things have definitely changed since her vision is impaired, and she has become a bit anxious. Okay, <laughs> maybe a lot anxious. Heidi called her good friend Rihanna for some help in providing getting her a ride to the doctor's office. So Heidi, because of her anxiety and issues that she had going on of not being able to see, not being able to taste or smell, she thought Rihanna could give her some advice and help her out. Well, Rihanna decided to, to walk on over, but Heidi was a little too anxious and didn't want to wait, so she decided to drive herself. Let's see what happens. Gosh, did I hit something? Rihanna! Rihanna! Get up! Are you okay? <laughs> talk to me now! Talk to me! What is going on? Oh my gosh, I think I just hit you! Can you see me? Can you hear me? Come on! We need to go to the doctor! I can't believe I just hit you! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> What do I do now? I guess I better call Uber. Okay, now that last clip, that was just crazy. Neither one of these women can drive. So, what's left to do nowadays? We just call Uber. So, they decided to call Uber to take him to the doctor's office. Let's see what happens. Hello, I'm Ahmed. This is my Uber ride for you. You come today to... What's wrong with you? You guys have issues? Oh yeah, I'm not seeing well and I can't um, taste anything or smell anything and oh, my no. friend here came to drive me and then I hit her with the car and now she can't hear and she is confused and she doesn't seem like she has very good balance. Well, today you must be in luck, my friends, because I am a doctor in my country and I specialize in the ear. Uh, one of the best things to know about the ear is that it's good for hearing. <laughs> Well, anyways, the external ear is what you can see, you know, such as your pina luba, whatever that is, is the earlobe. Do you understand? Uh-huh, the, pi the pinna, is that what that's called? The, the pinna is up at the top though, right? Yes, that oh, is, yes, okay. correct, correct. Uh -huh. And then you have the external acoustic medius. Uh -huh. Also known that? as the external alveolar canal. It's vibrations caused by sound traveling down, you know, the, the canal of the middle ear. Before it gets to the, the very inner ear, it has to go to the middle ear. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And then you have the, the tympanic membrane. 
is considered the external as, as well as the middle of the back side of the membrane. Does that make sense for you? Yes, that makes lots of sense. Okay, great, great. Then you get to the middle ear. Okay, also, is, is the middle ear also air filled mucus lined cavity? Includes tym tympanic membrane, which are the mechanical waves of sound cause of membrane to wiggle. You know, the, the wiggling, the be wiggling in your middle ear. Oh, the, so the sound, the motion of the, the sound makes it wiggle. Correct, like vibrations. Uh huh, uh huh. Correct, correct. Uh -huh. uh, the tympanic cavity, also well to, to malleus hammer, which uh, then causes the incan, incans to wiggle and, and it makes more wiggle in, in stirrup, wiggles. Uh-huh. Does it make sense? Yeah, you have a, um, a, a diagram there? You have something I can see? I don't know. Maybe, possibly. Let me see it here. Um, yes, yes, I do. This is a picture of the middle ear. So you have the hammer, which is also known as the malleus. The oh, yeah, I see it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Also known as incus and the stirrup, which are called stapes. These wiggle, which cause vibrations. Make sense? Uh, yes, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, great. And this big thing here is the eardrum. Uh-huh, that's the tympanic membrane. See, correct, yes, that, that the membrane, that the tympanic membrane is the eardrum. <laughs> okay. So then the wiggling goes to where? The wiggling, oh yes, the wiggling, uh, the stapes, okay, the stapes here, stir up. Uh, the stapes. Stapes. Uh-huh, yes, In my yes, country, yes, we uh -huh. call it stapes. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, here you can call it stapes if you want, but it's a stirrup. Okay. Okay. The wiggles, the stirrups is touching the oval window and causes the vibrations or the wiggle to move into the inner ear. Okay. The uh, eslucian tube, auditory tube, runs down next to the uh, co corded artery with a small opening allowing us to yawn, pop our jaw, to change the pressure and the amount of air in the cavity, like flying in a plane and you yawn to get the ears to drop, to pop, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, like to take the pressure out, yes, aha, uh -huh, yeah, I Correct. understand, okay. okay. Great, and then we go to the inner ear, okay? So, if you look at the inner ear, much, much things going on here. Very wet, wet area. So I think I understand what's happening so far. So the sound comes into the external aut autistic meatus, or this canal, and then it travels in, and making contact with the vibrations, making contact in the middle ear with the tympanic cavity, causing the malleus to vibrate, the, the incus to vibrate, and also the stapes to vibrate or wiggle, Correct. Which, yes. then, which then moves into the inner ear. Okay, so as the sound passes through the middle ear, it comes into the inner ear, which is a fluid-filled cavity, also called the labyrinth maze, because of the complicated shapes, of course, lies deep in the temporal bone behind the ear socket. This is a secure site for all the delicate receptor machinery. Two major divisions here. The bony labyrinth, as you can see here, is the warming channels in the bone where there's hollow spaces. This is a bed for the membraneous labyrinth, which is the second major division, which is a continuous series of membranous sacs and ducts laying inside the bony labyrinth. When vibration hits the, the vest or the uh, cochlea, which is what we have here, when the vibrations hit that, it's like water waves. Okay? The hairs on the cochlea are responsible for sending messages to the brain. So this is where, when you hear, everything that comes through the inner ear hits the cochlea, and the cochlea will send messages to the brain so we know what we are listening to. There is something also here in the cochlea which is responsible for sending the messages, and that's the semicircular canals. Now, in the semicircular canals, as you'll see here, there are things called crystals, which are my best favorite thing in the whole world. And um, what was your name again? Heidi, I do believe, right? Yes, uh huh. Heidi, I do believe your friend is suffering with, with this problem. So what I can do is when we stop, when we get to our destination, I can help your friend and maybe help her get her hearing back. Would that be great? Oh yeah, her hearing and her balance. She's very off balance. Okay, yes, well, the crystals in, in, in the semicircular canals, balance plays a, a major role in that. So this probably what's going on in her equilibrium is because her crystals are offset. 
So we need to get our crystals back set and I can do that when we reach our destination. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. So I must have shook up her crystals when I hit her with the car. You hit her with the car? Oh yes, no! I backed into her. That's why she can't hear and that's why she can't walk. Well, and I'm... that's why she's so off balance. Oh no. Well, I'm very glad that I, you guys chose me today to be your Uber driver because you get 100% satisfaction. Okay? Absolutely. All Thank right. you. Thank you. I'll just take a minute. You have to, so you have to turn the head? You have to balance it. You have to be very, very still. Uh -huh. Okay. It's like an exact science. And then what do you do? You turn the other way and then it just balances one, things out? Yes, in, in one second I will. She has no idea what's going on. I see that. We're fixing your crystals. <laughs> You'll understand when we Yay, finish. Fixing crystals. So without smell, you're not able to smell the strong skunk odors or taste yummy foods. They all work together. First, smell is processed by the odors into the central nasal cavity and are picked up by the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory epithelium contains chemoreceptor cells and olfactory receptor cells. The olfactory receptor cells Respond to the changes in the chem chemical concentration and different odors in the air. Generated impulses are sent to olfactory bulbs and the glomeri. The odor generates action potential activating second messengers to the olfactory cells. The action potential travels through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone to the olfactory bulbs and to the tract to the olfactory nerves, cranial nerve number one. Sense of smell in the olfactory process in the frontal lobe. They have the hypothalamus, hypothalamus, the olfactory bulb, the frontal bone, and amygdala, and the thalamus. Tastes work together. What we taste is it has a lot to do with what we smell. Most of the sensations that we taste send to the tongue. The tongue contains different papillaries. There are fibrillary forms, circumvallate, fungal forms, and folatic papillae. Papillae contains taste and they are all on the tongue. Taste buds contain taste receptor cells which are chemoreceptor taste. Also the process of taste and smell of the epiglottis there's five primary taste sensations, sweet, sour, bitter, and umami. the taste of meat. We have bitter, sour, sweet, salty, and umia, which is fat, beef. They sense the cranial nerves carrying taste information to the grista cortex of the brain. You're having some difficulties with your eyes today. What happened? Yeah, she hit me with a car. You hit her? Yeah, I just, I was, I was impatient. I was having some anxiety and I thought I better hurry and get to the doctor's office. I didn't want to not be able to get to the appointment, so I tried to drive myself. Well, are you okay? Yeah, no, I am. I lost my balance. And my oh, hearing. oh my goodness. The Uber driver fixed her though. He was really good. He's the like, Uber driver? Yeah. Yeah, he, can you believe that? He was a doctor in Pakistan. What? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he adjusted her crystals and she's good. So that's all wonderful. But I have been, for the last day or two, I haven't been able to taste anything, I haven't been able to smell anything, and then I woke up this morning and my vision's very blurred, my glasses aren't working, and I'm just not seeing well at all. Okay, well, let me take a look at your eyes real quick, okay? All right. Open up wide. Let me explain a little bit about your eyes. So you have your eyebrows, which help shade your eyes, your eyelids, which simply protect your eyes, your tarsal glands, which produce an oily substance that lubricates the eye, your ciliary glands, are basically um, sweat glands found on the margin of the eyelid. Your conjectivia is a transparent mucous membrane. Your lacrimal apparatus, which consists of lacrimal glands and ducts that drain lacrimal secretions into the nasal cavity. And your extrinsic eye muscles, which control the movement of okay, the Okay, so the eyeball has three different layers. When I, I want you to think of this like as an onion, like you're peeling back an onion. There's three different layers in the eye. And those layers are, on the very far outside, you have the fibrous tunic, the vascular tunic, which is the middle layer, and the sensory tunic, which is inside. So the fibrous tunic consists of the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, the cornea, which is right here, 
and the limbus. And then the second layer in is the vascular tunic, and it consists of a choroid, which is right here, which is, this is the middle layer. The choroid is a pigmented vascular layer of the eyeball, and it encircles the lens. You also have ciliary muscle, which is found in the ciliary bottle. It's muscle inside of the eye. That muscle controls the lens shape. And then you have the pupil. The pupil is just a hole in the eye that allows light to enter the eye. The one is just right here. That is the pupil. And then you have the iris, which the iris is the color part of the eye. It's what gives your eye the color. The radiocal muscle, which makes the pupil dilate and is used in low light and far vision. The third layer in is a sensory tunic. It consists of three layers, which is the pigmented layer, absorbs light and prevents it from scattering in the eye. The neutral layer, which transmits visual info using photoreceptors. And the optic disc, which the optic disc is right here. And then this is the optic nerve. Optic disc, optic nerve. The optic disc is the blind spot and it lacks photoreceptors. The optic nerve transports impulses to the brain from the retina. So this is the optic nerve and it transports impulses from the eye all the way up to the brain. The lens, which is right here. We should all know what, we should all know what lens is by this age. The lens is the thin elastic capsule inside your eye that can change shape precisely to focus light on the retina. This is the lens. The lens has two regions, which are the lens epithelium, which consists of conboidal cells and lens fibers, which form the bulk of the lens. You also have crystallins, which are transparent folded proteins that form the body of the lens. And you obviously don't have cataracts, which is clouding of the lens. Your lens look perfectly clear. Focusing light on the retina. Light passes from air into eye and light gets bent. The emetropic eye is a normal eye for distant vision, which is 20 feet. Focusing for distant vision is aiming the eyeballs so they're both fixated on the same object. Focusing for close vision <laughs> consists of three processes. Occamendation, which increases the refractory power of the lens. Construction of the pupils, which prevents the most divergent light rays from entering the eye, causing blurred vision. And conversions of eyeballs, which is straining the eye. All right, Heidi, so there are three homeostatic imbalances of refraction. You have myopia, which is nearsighted, hyperopia, which is farsighted, and astigmination, which is blurred vision. I don't believe you have either one of those, okay? I have blurred vision, for no, sure. No, no, but you don't have that case of blurred vision. Okay. Okay, okay. Photoreception is a light detection that leads to vision and depends on light-sensitive cells, called photoreceptor. Visual pigments, which are light-absorbed molecules that mediate vision. So you have different types of photoreceptions. You have rods, which function best in dim light, and cones, which function best in bright light and are good for color vision. Adaptation is the ability to adjust various levels of dark and light. Three Mine aren't working. They're just not working. There are three types of adapt adaptation. You have light adaption, which is when we move from dark into bright light. You have dark adaption, which is when we move from bright light into dark light. And then you have nisotoclovia, which is the inability to see in light or at night. Okay, so there are six homeostatic imbalances of the eye that you need to know about. You have sty, which is a red painful lump near the edge of your eyelid. You don't have that. Mm -hmm. You have cherylization, which is a lump in the rear gland of your eyelid. I didn't see a lump in your eyelid at all. You have conjectivitis, which is red and in irritated eyes. You don't have any redness on your eyes. Good. And you have pink eye, which is an infectious caused by bacteria or viruses. Your eyes are completely white. You have diplopia, which is double vision. Are you having double vision? No. When you hit one of you did. No, I wasn't double visioned. Ladies, I was just ladies, blurred, ladies, let's blurred. not argue, ladies. Let's not argue, ladies, okay? And then you have star visiums, which is cross eyed. You're not cross eyed, are you? Yes. No, I don't. All right, that. so since you don't have any of those homeostatic imbalances I was telling you about, I do believe that since you lost your sense of smell, your sense of taste, and you're having blurred vision, I do so believe I'm you gonna recommend some... that you go home and get some rest, and if in 24 to 48 hours it does not improve, you come back and see me. Okay, that sounds wonderful. That's good news. She's still not driving me home. No, no, and we'll call Uber. All right, you ladies, it was very nice seeing you, and I hope everything gets better. And Heidi, don't drive anymore, and Rihanna, stay off the road, because I don't think you can get hit again. It might not be good. You guys have a nice day. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Census. Appreciate You're welcome. It. See you next time.